Everything I said to her, according to the way her mindset works, told her that I had to be white. Mm -hmm. But it also said something else. If you're black, you can't achieve these things based on the way she thinks, which is insulting. So there's a, an incredible, I think one of the most incredible moments in media in the last year happened on your show. Uh, this is what, about six, seven months ago, something like that? Yeah, it's a, yeah, about uh, seven, yeah. Yeah, you had Ariva Martin on. Ariva Martin's a CNN contributor. Uh, mm. I'm friendly with her. She was on my show a couple of years ago on, on The Rubin Report. Um, and she's a, she's a progressive. She went on your show and, uh, well, why don't we just play the audio? I've chosen to cross different parts of the media world, done the work so that I'm qualified to be in each one. I never considered my color the issue. I considered my qualifications the issue. Well, David, you know, that that's a whole nother long conversation about white privilege and things that you have the privilege of doing that people of color don't have the privilege of. How do I and have the privilege you, of white privilege? David, by virtue of being a white male, you have white privilege. This whole long conversation, I don't have time to uh, get Ariva, I hate to break it to you, to but you should have been better prepped. I'm black. Okay, then I stand... See, you went to privilege. white privilege. This is the falsehood in this. You went immediately with an assumption. Your people, obviously, or you didn't look. You're talking to a black man. They who started out in rock radio in Boston, who crossed the paths into hip-hop, rebuilding one of the greatest black stations in America, and went on to work for Fox News, where I'm told apparently blacks aren't supposed to work, but yet you come with this assumption and you go to white privilege. David, That's actually David, insulting. Correct. It is, and I apologize because my people gave me wrong information. They, they told well, me... The whole white privilege thing is insulting. David, can, I, can I apologize and correct the record? I want to apologize. I was given wrong information about you, and I apologize. But based on my but color, white... you were going to something that I was part of. And just to add to it, my family background is white, black, Indian, Arawak, Irish, Scottish. I mean, it's so diverse. I'm like the UN when it comes to this. And this is part of the problem with driving a narrative around a construct like white privilege. Privilege is one thing where applied wealth, economy, uh, various social factors, but not necessarily determined by color of skin. To me, that is... Everything I've spent the last few years of my life talking about in a perfect wrapped package. It, it was a gift on a slow Tuesday. It really <laughs> was. So let me give a, the quick version, you know, of the backstory to this. One, they pitched my producers to come on my show. And when you get a pitch, <laughs> you look up your guest. You yeah. go, okay, what have they written? What stories? What have they appeared? You know, Google. Yeah. Come on. Whatever search engine, you get some information, and somewhere along the way, you'd find out that, oh, that's the David Webb, happens to be a black guy. That's not what happened here. They pitched me. She came on. We had a, I don't know, I will say this. We had a good conversation about William Barr's nomination and everything, and the differences of opinions on jury, you know, jurisprudence and other things. And then it went to this idea where we talked about success and all of these issues that led to our commentary. And I said to her, I said, look, I, I started out, my color wasn't the factor, I, you just heard that. Started out in rock radio, went through all these things. And I realized after, when I went back, I listened, everything I said to her, according to the way her mindset works, told her that I had to be white. Mm -hmm. But it also said something else. If you're black, you can't achieve these things based on the way she thinks, which is insulting. It's sad. It, it's, a so, a it's a soft bigotry of low expectation based on the color of your skin. And then, everybody's heard it. She threw her team under the bus. Yeah, they didn't, and, oh wait, well the line though, that your, her team wasn't, it didn't inform her. Didn't inform her. As, <laughs> as if that, is that what they're, well maybe in the progressive world they go, well this person's gay and this person's black. Right. Per, you know, that actually would be a cohesive way to go on a show. Right? But, but can you imagine what happened? She's there doing an interview. Did somebody <laughs> go and slide a piece of paper over that said he's white? Yeah. And, and now you've got a white guy. She heard the things that fed what she expected of a white person, but never thought 
anyone can achieve this. And that's the difference between me, you, and her. So I, so I don't want to, in any way, so she's not here to defend herself, so I don't want to make this too much about her, but, but that mindset, do you think that after you said, well, you know, I'm black and the rest of it, do you think that that might have dinged her way of thinking a little bit? I think it got through to people online because that clip went viral. It, it, it clearly got perfect, through them. Because yeah. you couldn't see each other. It was such a perfect example of what we're always talking about. Well, did it change her mind? I don't know. And look, you and I, I think, agree on the fairness of being there to defend yourself. But what I did offer her was a conversation. And in the second clip, that doesn't get as much attention. And I've played it on radio, we played it on television. I asked her to come back and give, I said, I'll offer you an hour, come back, we'll talk about white privilege. And she accepted. So my team sent an email as a follow-up requesting her appearance. And when I was asked on television, do you accept her apology? Because she gave that half-hearted apology. Yeah. It you wasn't know, really an apology. It wasn't really an apology. It was, it was a, a deflection, yeah. which is different than an apology, obviously. Uh, when, when she did that, I gave her the chance for a conversation. When I was asked, do you accept her apology? I said, I really don't, but what I'm offering her is a conversation, and I have offered her the chance to come back. And she never came back. So the story's not just a clip of what she said and why she said it, but the fact is that she avoided the conversation that was offered based on what she asked for yeah. and what she agreed to. And that to me is a level of, uh, and I have to say dishonesty, well, because we, if someone does that to me, you know what, I'm gonna be man enough or maybe a host enough or a guest enough, whatever term you wanna use, to go in and say, I'm gonna come and present my point and defend it if I believe in it. Yeah, well it just so, it shows what I would say is just a thinness of the argument because she could make an argument with her preconceived notions. Mm -hmm. Then once they're blown apart, you say, all right, let's let's talk it out for an hour. No yeah. problem. Disappears. And we, and we often see that. You get the accusation that you're a sellout or this one's a racist. And then the second you push back, boom, they disappear. Then they disappear. They to deplatform you or whatever else is left. By the way, funny thing about this story, she's a CNN legal analyst. First time she, <laughs> I, I still laugh at this one. I mean, I'm doing my show. My producer, I think it was Edwin, jumped in my ear and he said, look at the TV. Her first return that we know of to CNN was to comment on Jussie Smollett. There's karma yeah, in the yeah. universe. <laughs> it just, the Lord works in mysterious ways. In, in very mysterious ways. But, you know, I want, I want people to take something from it, not just the audio clip, which, you know, they've heard and, and the stories that went all over. The story here is that offer someone a conversation, challenge them to come in, but use it to tell others that this is why you shouldn't assume, believe, or, or at least be willing to engage. And that was really what I took out of it. And I deliberately kept the story going from my, pers my perspective for others, not for her, because it was no longer about her. So as a guy that's, that's worked through the radio uh, industry, which is a tough freaking industry that a lot of people want to get into it's a, it's a great game. don't do it yeah, don't right. do it uh, that's, stay out it's like comedy. it's like that's what everyone says don't do it but if you can do it and survive it's, yeah. it's pretty great you get to do what you love for for a living i mean were you see i mean the 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 precept the the premise that she had there that you would be fighting racism the entire time going up through your career. Mm -hmm. Did you see it the entire time? When you walk into Sirius XM, are they uh, throwing stuff at you? Everybody has different experiences. And my belief system is part of our experiences are how we interact with the world. Uh, a couple bullet points. When I started in radio, I started in rock radio because I love the music. I grew up knowing a lot of the artists. So it was a natural fit. People didn't see me because I could talk about something they cared about. So I could sit down with a uh, <laughs> right. long hair, earring, tattooed guy at a Poison concert in 1987 with Lita Ford and White Snake, you know, and, uh, you know, or Joe Cocker or Stevie Ray Vaughan. And we could talk about things. And uh, amazingly, nobody kind of went to color because once you remove the veil by how you act, people may have a moment, but they tend to come over to your side. And when I went to entertainment talk, and when I, I did a show with Willie D from the Ghetto Boys. All right, conservative David Webb, yeah, yeah. Willie D, Ghetto Boys gangster rap out of the Fifth Ward in Houston. And we don't agree on politics, but we agreed on something, which was we were trying to save people in the black community. And Willie, I gotta tell you, was one hell of a good guy on that. 
And that's what we did. We focused on what we could do together. So I didn't see the, the are there racists in the world? Yeah, did somebody have a bias against me? You know what, I don't care because I'm not gonna let it stop me. If I can't go through you, I'm gonna go around you. And that's my approach to it. And that's how my parents raised me. They said, find a path, work your way through it, and just do what you can to the best of your ability. And if you have to readjust, hey, that's life. If you're looking for more honest and thoughtful conversations about politics instead of nonstop yelling, check out our politics playlist. And if you wanna watch full interviews on a variety of topics, watch our full episode playlist all right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.